Girlfriends who have male best friends all know. Compared to their boyfriends. Male best friends are the ones they truly open up to. Later. I saw a message from her male best friend to her. It read. This poor guy. Just have fun with him. Don't take it seriously. When I finally gave up and left. She cried and questioned why I betrayed our love. I laughed and said. I was just having fun with you. Don't take it seriously. On Mika Lee's birthday. She wore a sexy outfit but refused to let me take her to the bar. I glanced at her exposed back and softly asked, Is Kenta E going to be there again? Mika's hand paused while applying lipstick, and her tone became impatient. Can you stop obsessing over Kenta? I've told you, we're just ordinary friends. See? She knows I dislike Kenta but never reflects on her own actions. Always thinking I'm overreacting. I didn't respond, and Mika seemed to realize her attitude was bad. So she softened her voice. Stop overthinking. I'm not taking you because of the circle of friends. Didn't you say you don't like my friends? I'll be back before 12. Then we'll celebrate alone. Dear, wait for me at home. She said this, leaned in to kiss my ear, and then left with her bag. Her ultra-thin dress would reveal too much when she bent over. I've mentioned it many times, but it always leads to an argument. Mika always says that only incompetent men care about what women wear, while capable men focus on protecting their girlfriends. But, how can I protect her? Every time she goes out with her shady friends, she says it's inconvenient to bring me along because they don't know me well. This time, I said nothing. When Mika hesitated at the door and turned to look at me, Honey, why don't you care about me anymore? Oh, it's my birthday today. It would be rude not to invite them. I promise. I'll go out with them less in the future. I didn't respond. Just smiled. She didn't know. Not only will I not care this time. In the future, I won't care about her anymore. Mika and I once had some wonderful memories together. During my internship, I often forgot to eat because I was so busy with work. She would always bring me a lunchbox, saying she made it herself. Then, she would smile and watch me finish eating before insisting we go buy her favorite ice cream. On those hot summer nights, she would complain about being tired after a few steps, asking me to carry her. Mika smelled nice and was light. We would walk down a street to buy her favorite haagen then walk back to the office and drive away. I enjoyed this simple happiness. But Mika often complained that I wasn't romantic and didn't know how to make a girl happy. To satisfy her, I frequently searched online for date ideas, racking my brains to make her happy. Now that I think about it, the whole internet teaches men how to care for their girlfriends. But why doesn't it teach women how to love men? Later, I found out she was too close with her childhood friend Kenta and mentioned it a few times. At first, she patiently explained. But eventually, she became increasingly impatient saying it was normal for friends of the opposite sex to be close, and that Kenta was her male best friend and their friendship was purely platonic. After many arguments, I chose a peaceful breakup. Three years later, I met Mika again at work, she was at the client company, and not only did she help me achieve many business goals, but she also frequently brought up old times, bringing lunch boxes to ensure I ate. In front of everyone at the company, she passionately confessed her love for me, saying she regretted losing me and had been single, waiting for me all these years. Her words were so sincere that, amidst the cheers of my colleagues, I drank too much and got back together with her. Everyone said Mika loved me deeply, and women like her were rare, so I should cherish her, but if she truly loved me, how could she be so ambiguous with another man? That night, I must have been drunk out of my mind to believe that people can change. I lit a cigarette, changed clothes, and went out. At 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening, S City was bustling with lights and people. I bought some beer and barbecue, sat by the roadside and silently watched, then bought a ticket for a movie I'd always wanted to see. We had planned to watch this movie together before it was released, but now it was almost out of theaters, and we still hadn't seen it. She had too many friends in her circle. Whenever I asked if we could set a date to see it, she would blink those innocent eyes and coyly say, sorry, I've already made plans with friends. She might have thought it was cute, but after so many times, all I could do was smile bitterly. Thankfully, now I had come to terms with it, without Mika at the movie and without her constant chatter in my ear, I could fully concentrate on the film. After the movie ended, I turned my head and saw two people passionately kissing on the platform in the central square. The crowd was cheering, urging them to be together. After a long kiss, the man turned around, wiped his lips, and smirked. Who said I couldn't handle it? We've kissed. Now let's go back and continue the fun. It was Kenta. I stopped in my tracks and saw the woman in his arms. Her face flushed. As expected, it was Mika. Through the crowd. Mika saw me and broke free from Kenta, running quickly towards me. Unfortunately, I didn't wait for her. When Mika rushed back to our home, I had already packed most of my belongings. The idea of breaking up with her wasn't new. I was just waiting for the right moment. A moment to be completely heartbroken. 
Now that the moment had arrived, she was in a panic, rushing to hug me. Martin, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I just drank too much today, and it was just a dare. They told me to kiss Kenta outside. I thought this might be the last time I see him, so I didn't refuse. I won't do it again. She reached out to take the suitcase from my hand, but I gently pushed her away. All her explanations were useless. If there was nothing between them, why would their friends tease them to kiss? The Lin family and the E family were the wealthiest leaders in their circle. If there were no signs, how could they dare? I intended to break up peacefully, but hearing her words, I couldn't help but laugh coldly. See, she knew why I wanted to leave. She knew where she was wrong. But why did she previously make excuses so confidently? Are you apologizing for betraying my trust, or because you got caught? Mika's face stiffened, seemingly hurt by my words. Her long eyelashes blinked, and tears quickly followed. Seeing that I wasn't comforting her as before, she paused and apologized softly, saying it was just an accident. She didn't expect Kenta to suddenly kiss her. I already didn't believe her, and even more so when I saw her phone lighting up on the table. I saw the contents at a glance. Kenta was still her top pinned contact, despite her claiming she had removed him. Clearly, another lie. The message read, was he really mad about just a dare kiss? Poor and petty. Why do you like someone like that? Just have fun. Don't take it seriously. Mika saw it too. She awkwardly flipped her phone face down, then clung to me again, reaching out for a hug. She used to act coquettishly like this, but now as she got close, I smelled smoke mixed with her perfume. I didn't know if she smoked behind my back or if it was Kenta's smell. Either way, it disgusted me, a woman who lied habitually. Seeing my cold gaze, Mika was stunned and nervously snuggled against me. Honey, I'm a bit drunk today. Let's sleep first and talk about it tomorrow. Okay. They say couples fight at the head of the bed and make up at the foot. Let's do as you say tonight. Okay. I began to reflect. Maybe in the past, I was too accommodating, which gave her the illusion that everything could just blow over. But why should she think I would always be there for her? So, I smiled. Do as I say. Fine, then let's break up. Mika didn't expect that answer. She was stunned, then got angry. She was always like this, no matter how big the mistake. If I didn't mention it, she'd act innocent. If I did, she'd get defensive, making it seem like my fault. She turned away, looking impatient. She said, Martin, you're so annoying. I told you, Kenta is just a friend. We've been friends since elementary school. Should I break off all friendships just because I'm dating you? Seeing my lack of reaction, she complained recklessly. You really have no heart. Go ahead. Leave and never come back. And leave everything I bought you. Mika came from a wealthy family and always despised my shabby clothes. She insisted I dress in suits and wear expensive watches according to her taste. I was just an ordinary office worker. These things were only useful when I was with her. So, I had already left everything in the bedroom. Taking none of it. Before leaving, Mika's eyes were red. Looking like I had wronged her. Martin, I agree you need to cool down. But I absolutely don't agree to break up. I ignored her, blocked her, and walked out. But Mika didn't give up. She came to my office every day. Being from the client company, my colleagues treated her respectfully. Some even praised her in front of me, advising me not to take her for granted. Faced with such words, Mika always appeared shy. No matter how I warned her, she turned a deaf ear. After a few times, I stopped holding back and retorted directly. Yes, although I kissed another man behind my boyfriend's back, I'm still a good girl. Right, Mika. Mika's face turned red with anger, and she threw a tantrum, cursing me. I just ignored her, and the next day I applied to have someone else handle her account. No matter how many messages she sent, I didn't reply, until one day, Kenta came to see me personally. It's quite funny. Ever since the breakup, Mika has been posting ambiguous messages, sad music, and emo captions on her social media, fully portraying the role of a heartbroken lover. This stirred Kenta to feel sorry for her and come to accuse me, the so-called unforgivable bastard. As soon as I accepted his friend request, Kenta sent a long message, filled with condescension. Martin, who do you think you are? A poor boy with an average background. If it weren't for Mika liking you, we wouldn't even look at you. You and we are from two different worlds. You're just a social climber. Why do you have so many demands? Let me be blunt. We can't stand people like you. So yes, we won't allow you to integrate into our circle. What? Did you think dating Mika would let you climb the social ladder? I didn't reply. Instead. I took a screenshot and sent it to Mika with a note, control your dog. Mika called me almost immediately. I didn't answer, so she kept calling. I started to regret not blocking her phone number when I blocked her on WeChat a few days ago. But Mika is stubborn. After I blocked one number, she used another phone to call again. When I finally picked up, she started talking non-stop like a pea shooter. Martin, you finally agreed to talk to me. 
I've thought a lot these past few days. I really do love you. For you. I can step out of this circle. Can we get back together? You still have feelings for me. Right. Otherwise. You wouldn't care about Kenta's provocation. Give me another chance. I took a deep breath. Shocked by her overflowing confidence. After a long pause. I asked. Do you have any thoughts about Kenta's words? He was just being a friend. Not wanting to see me sad. I'll introduce you to him later to clear up the misunderstanding. I fell silent. I was deeply impressed by her reasoning. Why did she think I could clear up the misunderstanding with Kenta? In other words, if an introduction could solve the problem, why didn't she do it earlier? It was nothing but self-deception. I sneered and slowly spoke. Mika, have you ever thought about what our future would look like if we got married? There was silence on the other end of the line. I didn't rush her, just waited quietly. She seemed to have never realized that what made me determined to leave was not only her closeness with Kenta but also the most important factor, the incompatibility of our circles. We were fundamentally incompatible, and I was always looking for a serious relationship leading to marriage. Mika seemed to make a great effort before sighing lightly. Martin, I really do love you and want to marry you, but you know my family would never agree. I nodded, speaking with sarcasm. So you should realize that this is your problem, not mine. Don't call me again. After I had a final conversation with Mika, I set my phone to whitelist only, blocking all unknown numbers. I didn't realize how far Kenta would go for Mika until I received a notice of termination from my company. He had used his family's influence to pressure the company into firing me. On my last day, my boss took me out for a drink. Martin, I really had high hopes for you. According to the plan, I was going to promote you next year. I didn't expect this to happen. You probably can't stay in S-City anymore. Since we're from the same hometown, I'll introduce you to someone there. Give it a try. I had already had enough of the 996 work culture in the big city. And with a severance package of N plus 3, I tried to find some humor in the situation. Relieved that at least my hair was safe. I packed my belongings and bought a train ticket back to my hometown. I never expected Mika to follow me to the train station. Just as I arrived at the station square, she stopped me, grabbing my sleeve with a desperate tone. Martin, I love you. Please don't go. Stay with me. I'm willing to give up everything for you. I brought my ID and household registration. We can get married today. She looked at me expectantly trying to hold onto my arm, but I pried her fingers off one by one, I said, Mika, even if you want to marry me now, I don't want to marry you, I pushed her away and quickly walked off with my suitcase, she stood there, bewildered, as if she had heard something unbelievable, it's laughable, she thought I would always be waiting for her, no matter what, fortunately, the train station uses ID card entry, so I didn't have to endure the scrutiny of a ticket inspector, but I didn't expect someone to record a video of Mika and me outside the train station. Her attractive looks and the image of a lovesick rich girl quickly made her an internet sensation. She took advantage of the situation to start an account, sharing stories about our past and gaining a large following. Meanwhile, I was portrayed as the heartless jerk. Although Mika tried to clarify, she always did so ambiguously, saying it was all her fault but never specifying why. In the end, netizens thought she was just being a lovesick fool, still defending the jerk who hurt her. As the video spread, my life back home became increasingly difficult. Strangers would often approach me, asking if I was the infamous jerk ex-boyfriend everyone was looking for. I performed a live meltdown for them. Yes, it's me. She approached me because her male best friend was terminally ill and needed a liver transplant. She wanted me to donate my liver to her childhood friend. When I refused, I fled back to S-City. Take my advice. Stay away from anyone with the last name Lin or E, or you'll end up miserable. Beware you might be next. What if she decides you're a match and wants your liver? I fought rumors with rumors. Later, Mika's comment section became increasingly strange, with supporters of both her and me splitting evenly. Gradually, she stopped updating her account, and the video's popularity waned. Thanks to my former boss's recommendation, I connected with a local leader and found a well-paying job back home. At a class reunion, I even ran into my first love. Originally, most of my classmates had lost touch. But a childhood friend insisted on organizing a gathering when they heard I was back. They invited everyone they could reach, including Nami. Nami was sweet and cute, yet she carried a gentle and graceful demeanor. Even in school uniforms, she always looked better than the others, her smile revealing adorable dimples. She had a warm personality too. Back then, I was mischievous and often teased her, making her glare at me angrily, warning that she wouldn't talk to me next time, but she always did. During high school, with its heavy workload, Nami was the only person I saw as a beacon of hope. Just thinking of her made me feel like I could keep going. I had once hoped to attend the same university as Nami. Unexpectedly, she changed her plans and stayed local, and we gradually lost contact. My high school crush was pure and beautiful. Back then, I didn't even think about being the only one with Nami. After all, 
She was the school's goddess, the unreachable moon admired by many. For us, she was the bright moon, out of reach but still a joy to behold. But now, at the dinner table, Nami's eyes reddened amidst everyone's teasing. Nami, we couldn't get you to come out before, but you came when Martin returned. Is our school bell a teacher now? Still the goddess. Huh? Wonder which guy is lucky enough to marry her. Nami used to tutor Martin, even though he had a girlfriend. Right. I shook my head and opened a bottle of beer for him. Stop talking nonsense. We broke up a while ago. Nami's eyes lit up instantly. She hesitated, looking at me and then at the others. When I went to the restroom, she stopped me. I, I'm single too, Martin. They weren't wrong. I did like you in high school. I was stunned. I didn't know if it was because of her confession or her straightforwardness. Then, I instinctively asked. And now? Now, I still do. Nami looked up at me, her fair cheeks glowing under the hallway lights, her eyes gentle and moist. That day, amid our classmates' exclamations, we got together, but I never expected Mika to be so obsessed. Following me from S-City, she came with our photos, claiming I had moved on too quickly, accusing Nami of being a homewrecker. She even said I was a gold digger who used Nami as a sugar mama. Some of her crazy fans started attacking us, even sending letters to Nami's school, demanding her dismissal for her supposed misconduct. Rumors and slander can be incredibly damaging, especially in professions that value reputation highly. This time, I couldn't take it anymore and decided to fight back. In response to the online rumors, I put together a complete PowerPoint presentation. If people wanted to gossip, I was going to give them everything, starting with her intimate behavior with Kenta during our relationship, to their public kiss during a dare, and then Kenta's provocation and pressure on my company to fire me. As for Mika's claim that I used her money to support another woman, I provided detailed transaction records, one by one, those months and years of me scrimping and saving just to not owe her, just to feel worthy of standing by her side, were laid bare. All the money I had saved was spent on her. She thought she was buying things for me, but in reality, I couldn't refuse her so-called generosity. Since she first gave me expensive gifts, I developed a habit of keeping track. I would research the prices of those luxury items, and those numbers weighed heavily on my mind. To repay this burden, I pushed myself to buy equivalent gifts for her, although to her, those gifts were insignificant. She even complained to Kenta that my gifts were old-fashioned and not to her liking. Meanwhile, Kenta, under the guise of a best friend, was undermining me while giving Mika even more expensive gifts, claiming that friends are the ones who truly love her. Mika was brainwashed by him, constantly feeling that I wasn't good enough. During our relationship, I spent most of my money on her, living frugally myself, but she felt it was only right. Now, after the breakup, realizing my worth, she wanted to use public opinion to force me back. I don't know who gave her the bad idea, but I definitely wasn't going back. Public opinion online flipped in an instant. Mika and Kenta's identities were exposed, causing a drop in their family's stock values. Mika had no choice but to post a tearful apology video. She repeatedly said she was sorry, claiming she didn't know she had caused me so much trouble and was unaware of Kenta's insults. She said she was just too in love with me to accept losing me, but netizens weren't fools. Under her new apology video, they tagged Kenta in every comment. Yeah, sure. Such deep love that you kissed the E family's eldest behind his back. Poor boys have no right to love. Huh. While stringing him along, you played dares with E family's eldest. No complaints. Right. Just a fling. Huh. Why chase after him so relentlessly? Can't handle the game. Such comments became more frequent, forcing Kenta to also release an apology video. His face was bruised, seemingly having been reprimanded by his family. Kenta's biggest mistake was looking down on and mocking the grassroots while benefiting from them. In the end, I gained a wave of followers on the platform due to the incident. Nami, disheartened by her school's attitude over the rumors, quit her job and tried her hand at being a content creator from home. Unlike Mika's constant sob stories, she simply recorded couple vlogs. Sometimes it was us holding hands at the supermarket, sometimes her cooking for me and making sure I ate. Her fresh and simple style surprisingly attracted a lot of fans. One day, Nami and I recorded a quick QA session. However, Mika started leaving random comments. Nami specifically highlighted her comment for everyone to see. It read, I used to make you these lunch boxes every day. Martin, don't you remember? You're just repeating our past. Isn't that just missing me? What bad luck. I hurried to clarify. That's not true. I've known for a long time that Mika can't cook. She used to disguise takeout as homemade. Who uses plastic containers for homemade steamed eggs? I just pretended not to know during the relationship. Not to mention other things. I'm pretty boring myself. What some girls would call dull, unromantic. The dates I understood were just meals, movies, and shopping, making my mundane life better with you in it. But after the video was posted, Mika didn't stop. She kept comparing herself to Nami, 
from makeup to behavior, trying to prove that Nami was just her replacement. So Nami and I revisited old places, wore our school uniforms, and went to our high school. In the video, she sat on a desk, turning to look at me. I fell for you three times, once in high school, once now, and once in every future moment. Mika finally deactivated her account and stopped commenting, because netizens found out that Nami had been single all these years. She was clean, beautiful, and completely different from Mika. Also, at the end of the video, I pulled out a ring and knelt on one knee. Miss Nami, will you marry me? The diamond might not be big now, but I promise to give you all my love. The engagement preparations went smoothly. Our parents met and were very satisfied with each other. Nami's parents were both teachers, strict but with good values. While my parents both had stable jobs, not wealthy but never lacking. No one expected that such a dignified engagement party would be disrupted by several Bentleys. Kenta brought Mika, barging directly into the hotel. He seemed used to being arrogant. When the hotel staff tried to stop him, he threw a stack of money at their faces. What rules? Just not enough money, right? Is this enough? Get lost. Mika ignored the commotion. Her eyes fixated on me as she walked closer. They seemed well prepared. She was even wearing a wedding dress, more luxurious than Nami's gown. I couldn't help but laugh out of sheer anger, instinctively shielding Nami behind me and coldly questioning them. This is my engagement party. If you've had enough fun, leave now. Mika's tears immediately started falling, leaving two white streaks on her perfectly made-up face. She said, I know, Martin, I'm here to win you back. I don't mind if you think of me as her substitute. I'm willing to do anything for you. Come with me. I really can't live without you. Martin, I'm pregnant with your child. Everyone's expression changed upon hearing this. Even Kenta, who had been messing with the staff, looked at her in surprise. No one expected her to play this trump card. I could feel Nami stiffening behind me, gripping my hand tighter. I looked at Mika and laughed coldly. Mika, do you think I'm an idiot? I've wanted to break up with you for a long time, so it's been a while since we've been together. And if we count back, the timing doesn't add up. If you insist on this lie, I'll take you to the hospital right now. Miss Lin, my heart belongs to my fiancé. Mika's face turned pale. She looked like she might collapse, biting her lip until it bled. Even as she fell to the ground, she looked at me with resentment, asking. You say your heart belongs to her. What am I to you then? What about our beautiful memories together? I wrapped my arm around Nami's waist, not sparing a glance at Mika. Didn't the E family's eldest say it? Just a fling. Why are you taking it so seriously? If you insist on defining our relationship, like Kenta, just a friend I can kiss, Mika seemed unable to hear anything. She laughed and cried, desperately crawling towards me, her long dress tripping her, grabbing at my suit pants. Don't leave. Even as a friend, Martin, don't leave. I turned to look at the furious Kenta, who glared at me with hatred, but I found it laughable. Why blame me instead of pulling away the crazed Mika? A long time ago, they told me that if they truly wanted to be together, I wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have dragged on until now. Exactly. Now that I'm out of the picture, why aren't they together? I pulled my pants free and responded one last time. Mika, I did like you, but that's in the past. That ended when she repeatedly went to bars and messed around with her shady friends. I held Nami's hand and walked away without looking back. I completely ignored the chaos behind us. Later, I learned that on the day of the engagement party, Nami had arranged for her cousin to film the event planning to edit the footage and share it online to spread the joy with everyone. However, Mika's dramatic antics enraged her cousin, who then uploaded the unedited version online, and it quickly went viral. The Lin and E families once again found themselves under public scrutiny due to their heirs. To minimize the damage, the E family brought in an illegitimate child from outside and announced him as the new heir. The Lin family took a simpler approach. Since Mika was pregnant, they forcibly married her to Kenta and launched a series of PR measures. Unfortunately, the public wasn't buying it. What started as a private matter turned into a public spectacle, with the Lin family's PR department's condescending attitude angering people further, leading to widespread boycotts. The next time I saw news about them was on a legal show. Kenta had beaten Mika, leading to her death. Both grew up as the pride of their families, close but with fiery tempers. Mika was indeed pregnant, but the child wasn't mine. After our breakup, Mika was in such pain that Kenta took her out drinking, leading to a one-night stand. Mika believed the man that night was me, and Kenta, to save face, didn't correct her. When she crashed our engagement and revealed her pregnancy, Kenta couldn't hide the truth any longer. He had always thought that he and Mika would marry eventually, allowing them to continue their separate lives while maintaining appearances. But Mika truly fell in love with me, which irked Kenta. He badmouthed me to her and took advantage of her vulnerability. When Mika found out the true paternity of the child, she broke down and threatened to sue Kenta, her family, however, forced her to marry him. 
the Yi family couldn't let their bloodline be disgraced, so they quickly got them married, but Mika blamed Kenta for ruining our relationship, and Kenta resented her lack of appreciation. Their marriage quickly deteriorated, with Kenta indulging in hedonism and eventually beating Mika during a drunken argument, causing her to miscarry. By the time he sobered up and took her to the hospital, it was too late, the child was gone, and Mika, from excessive blood loss, was too. Kenta went to prison, and when he was released, the E family had no place for him, reducing him to the commoner he despised. With this scandal, the Lin and E families were beyond saving, their company stock prices plummeted, but the E family's illegitimate child managed to turn things around, proactively seeking cooperation with us. He offered a very generous deal and even helped me climb the corporate ladder, securing three promotions, my salary tripled, and I opened a studio in my hometown, Nami, the boss lady spent most of her time at the studio, recording videos while working. Years later, our business expanded, becoming a well-known local enterprise. As a couple, we became famous entrepreneurs. During a speech as outstanding alumni, Nami leaned on my shoulder and whispered, that year, I stood under the cherry blossom tree, thinking if you turned around, I would confess my love, but fortunately, those in love won't miss each other. I have good news for you, Martin, you're going to be a father. Spring was coming again, and our happiness continued. Mika's epilogue. The first time I saw Martin, I liked him. He had a quality not found in our social circle. Because of this, I fell for him, even trying to learn how to cook for him. Of course, I failed. So, I usually had the housekeeper cook or ordered takeout, pretending it was my own work. Later, I learned that Martin had known all along but never exposed me. Such a good Martin, and I missed him. I gradually forgot why I liked him, focusing only on comparing him to my circle, thinking he wasn't as wealthy or interesting as my friends. When he decided to leave, I finally woke up, but it seemed too late, Martin left resolutely, no matter how I begged him, he never looked back, I looked at my empty home, feeling a cold loneliness, Kenta kept messaging to comfort me, but I angrily told him to stop contacting me, he asked if I was willing to abandon years of friendship for a man, I hesitated and asked him for advice again, Kenta was somewhat of a player, I knew we would eventually marry, but I didn't like him, after all, having experienced Martin's wholehearted love, who would choose to be just another option? But I also had to admit that I enjoyed being adored by two men. I tried many ways to win Martin back. I was ready to give up everything and marry him. Started an account to document our love. Even considered cutting ties with Kenta. The things I told Martin were sincere. If he was willing to come back, I would leave this circle and never associate with Kenta and the others. Focusing solely on him. I believed in Martin's resilience. He could build a future for us. For that future, I was willing to lose my dignity trying again and again to get close to him, even crashing his wedding. That wedding dress I wore was chosen with all my hopes for marriage, only to be torn apart that day. The child in my belly was Kenta's. I hated him for betraying my trust and hated myself even more for not listening to Martin. When I found out I was pregnant, I was overjoyed, thinking it would bring us back together, only to realize it was a fruit of judgment. Even if unwillingly, the Lin family gave up on me. In our circle, all benefits come at a price, and we, the men and women, have to marry and provide the next bargaining chip. Now pregnant, I was no longer valuable. Kenta went out with other women. I didn't care, but I couldn't accept being confined to the E family. Unable even to see Martin from afar, I laughed and cried. Unable to accept this life, yelling at Kenta, who drank daily, if it weren't for you, if I had cut ties with you decisively, left this circle completely, Martin would have married me. I would be the one standing beside him, looking so happy. Kenta seemed enraged by my words. Before losing consciousness, I saw on my phone, their interview, Nami nestled in his arms, glowing with happiness, originally, this happiness could have been mine, it should have been me, I closed my eyes in resentment, hoping to meet him again in another life, 